Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a framework we've developed to efficiently analyze how changes in network inputs impact a network's end-to-end -end forwarding behavior. This is joint work with my, my collaborators at Zhang Jiaotong University. Our story begins 2,500 years ago in ancient Greece, where the philosopher Heraclitus declared that change is the only constant in life. Now, fast forward to the 21st century, and this philosophy still rings true for networks. For example, prior studies have shown that large universities edit tens of configuration stances in routers each month. And each week, a dozen configuration edits are made to each device in Facebook's backbone network. On a daily basis, networks receive route updates from external peers. For example, studies have shown that tier one ISPs receive a median of 100,000 route updates per day. Finally, links and routers fail frequently, causing changes in the network topology. For example, in California's research and education network, studies have shown that each link fails tens of times per year. And in Microsoft's data centers, studies have shown over a dozen links fail each day. Given the high frequency of changes, operators need network analysis tools that revolve around network changes. For example, tools that can answer questions like, would this particular configuration change reduce the overall reachability in my network? Or would this external route withdrawal degrade load balancing? However, existing control plane verifiers don't revolve around changes, they revolve, on, they revolve around network snapshots. We argue that this is not the right model for network verification, much like the Ptolemaic system is not the right model of the universe. To understand a little bit more why we need a different approach, let's take a look at existing control plane verifiers in more detail. They take a snapshot of a network's configurations, external routes, and available links as input, and evaluate whether this snapshot satisfies one or more end-to-end -end forwarding properties. To assess the impact of a change in control plane inputs, the verifiers have to be run again on the modified inputs. Also, the engineers have to decide which properties to verify to confirm that the changes are safe. For example, if we want to determine whether a change in route filters has unintended side effects, the network engineers have to check reachability between all subnets and compare the original and revised verification results. This approach of running the tool twice has two big limitations. First of all, it turns out that most configuration changes are small, and this means that analyzing updated control plane inputs from scratch is actually wasteful. For example, we analyzed three months of configuration edits from a large research university's backbone network that has 28 routers. And there's about 75,000 lines of configuration across these routers, and in total, these routers have about 25,000 forwarding rules. We looked at three months of, of changes and plotted here for each of those changes, the number of lines of configuration that's changed, as well as the number of forwarding rules or access control list rules that are changed uh, as a result of this configuration change. We can see that uh, the average number of lines of configuration changed is actually only about 200 lines, which is less than 0.3% of the overall lines of configuration in this network. And uh, Furthermore, if we look at the number of forwarding or ACL rules that are changed, we see on average that only 150 rules are changed, which is less than 0.6% of the total number of forwarding rules in the network. So even for a single change, there's not a lot in the network that's being updated. Similarly, as another example, we observed an hour, uh, a year of hourly route table snapshots from a large national research and education network. We excluded hours where there was a configuration change, so we could only focus on changes that were resulting from external route updates. And we observed that 85% uh, of the time, despite there being external route updates, there's actually no change in the router's most preferred routes. So the forwarding rules remain the same. And only 4% of the time um, are there actually more than 10 route changes that result from these external route updates within a single hour. So in summary, we see that changes are often small and analyzing snapshots from scratch just doesn't make sense. The second limitation of existing control plane verifiers is that engineers have to decide which properties they're gonna re-verify uh, when they invoke the verifier on subsequent snapshots. Now, some properties to verify are obvious. They relate directly to the intent of the change. For example, suppose a network engineer wanted to confirm that a change in route filters on this center router has the intended effect of restricting access from X to a new subnet Z. So it seems obvious then that we should check reachability between the restricted subnet X uh, and the new subnet Z. 
However, a change can also impact seemingly unrelated forwarding behaviors. For example, a change in route filters may also impact reachability to the existing subnet Y. And ignoring these side effects can actually result in an operator incorrectly concluding that a change is safe and doesn't cause any problems for the network. A simple workaround would be to actually check all possible or perhaps all inferred end-to-end -end forwarding properties. For example, we could check all pairs reachability and that would capture this change in this seemingly unrelated behavior. But doing this from scratch is prohibitively expensive and actually likely results in a lot of unnecessary computation. For example, if access from a subnet was already restricted, then further restrictions in access are unlikely to impact reachability from that subnet. And so therefore, we don't want to have to re-verify every single property. To address these limitations, we design a network analysis framework where differences are first-class citizens, and we call our framework Differential Network Analysis, or DNA. DNA takes as input not snapshots of configurations, routes, and available links, but rather differences in configurations, external routes, and available links since the last time that DNA was invoked. Internally, DNA analyzes these changes and produces a set of differences in end-to-end -end behavior as output. For example, a list of destinations that are now unreachable or waypoints that are no longer traversed. Now, the fundamental challenge in realizing this vision is making such a framework both efficient as well as easy to extend to different protocols, vendors, and properties. We address these challenges using a modular three-stage framework. Each stage takes differences as input and produces differences as output. The first stage takes, as I mentioned, differences in configurations, external routes, and available links, and it simulates the control plane in order to produce differences in the actual forwarding rules. The second stage takes these differences in forwarding rules and conducts differential data plane modeling in which these forwarding rules are integrated into forwarding graphs and the differences in the forwarding graphs resulting from the forwarding rule changes are output by this stage. The final stage takes these differences in forwarding graphs and conducts differential property checking. In other words, it traverses the forwarding graphs for the equivalence classes uh, whose forwarding graph has changed, as well as from the points in the forwarding graph where those changes originate. And this gives us the final output of DNA, which is differences in end-to-end -end properties like reachability. Due to the limited amount of time today, I'm gonna to focus just on this first stage, um, but I'm happy to answer questions or encourage you to take a look at the paper to learn more about the other two stages of DNA. We look at a control plane's operation. We observe that a control plane repetitively receives, filters, ranks, and advertises routes. Uh, and so this is a recursive process that continues until routing normally converges. Uh, if we see a change in configurations, uh, this is gonna trigger changes in the routes that the control plane is gonna filter or, mod or the way those routes are modified. If there's a change in link states, that may cause some routes to no longer be available and uh, different best routes to be selected. And whenever these changes in control plane inputs happen, uh, the control plane is going to incrementally update its routes. And any routes that are not affected by configuration edits or these link state changes won't change in any way. Now, if, as I mentioned earlier, existing control plane verifiers simulate the network from scratch. Um, so similar to a control plane, they do in fact recurse Intel convergence, or we often think about this as simulating Intel fixed point until there's no more changes in routes. Uh, but they're not actually doing any, they can't accommodate incremental updates in the initial inputs. Uh, instead, they need to take the snapshot and analyze it over from scratch because none of this intermediate state is being saved. It's only the final routing state that they're keeping track of. This leads us to approach this from a different perspective uh, and leverage recent advances in data log that allow us to do such incremental computation. Uh, in particular, we rely on differential data log or DD log uh, in order to model the control plane's forwarding behavior as a set of rules expressed over a set of relations. Uh, while existing data log engines already uh, compute a, the results until fixed point, DD log has the additional advantage that it can also accommodate differences in the initial input relations and compute incremental updates to the corresponding intermediate and final output relations. To understand a little bit more how this works, let's take an example. 
So here I've shown uh, the primary relations that exist in DNA's model expressed in DDLog. And so uh, links in the state of those links is one of our input relations or tables of input. And so if we remove a link, DDLog is automatically going to determine that this results in a change in OSPF routes uh, and remove the corresponding route from the OSPF route table. Furthermore, it'll determine that removing this route from the set of choices means a new best route has to be selected. And so the old best route will be removed and a new best route will be added to the best OSPF route table. This process will continue until eventually in our final set of outputs, we observe that there is a forwarding rule that gets removed and a new forwarding rule that gets added to accommodate for this link change. Now, in order to make this process more efficient, uh, we actually take some of the more complex aspects of this model, like routing policies and ranking of best routes, and actually express them using custom functions rather than using DD logs built in primitives. And that's because if we use DD logs built in primitives, we'd actually need a very large number of rules and a lot of extra relations, uh, whereas we can express it much more efficiently using customized functions. Additionally, we can actually partition the routes of the network into non overlapping sets of routes whose routing and decision processes don't impact each other. And that allows us to simulate different segments of the control plane in parallel. So I've talked about the first stage of our modular three stage framework in which we incrementally simulate the control plane using DDLock. In this second stage, differential data plane modeling, we rely on a real-time data plane verifier, APKeep, that's designed to process updates and forwarding rules in real time. But we modify it to process batches of forwarding rules in order to more efficiently compute changes in equivalence classes and changes in those equivalence classes forwarding graphs. Finally, for the differential property checking stage, rather than traversing every single forwarding graph for every equivalence class and traversing that forwarding graph from all entry points into the network, we instead rely on the set of differences in the forwarding graphs to know precisely which equivalence classes have changed, as well as where in that forwarding path they've changed, which allows us to do a restricted traversal of those forwarding graphs and identify differences in end-to-end -end properties more efficiently. So overall, we look at our performance end-to-end -end using the same configurations that I talked about earlier, where we look at the 28 routers and 50 links from the backbone network of a large university. Uh, and we look at a total of 66 different configuration edits that were made at different periods of time over a three month period. On uh, the graph here, I've shown the amount of time that it takes to compute differences in all pairs reachability. So basically any pair that was reachable that has now become unreachable or any pair that was unreachable that is now reachable will be identified by DNA. Uh, we compare this against a state-of-the-art uh, controlled plane verifier, which is uh, Batfish. Um, particularly, we use the, the latest version that relies on custom simulation of the control plane. And we also compare against a, a baseline system where we have uh, not implemented the optimizations at the various stages of DNA. And we see that by focusing on changes and making differences in control plane inputs, first-class citizens, we're able to conduct our analysis and identify changes in end-to-end -end forwarding properties about three orders of magnitude faster in the, median, in the median case. If we look at each individual stage, we can see that uh, the enhancements that we've made at each stage offer benefits that allow us to achieve this overall end-to-end -end, uh, speed up in performance. So in our differential control plane simulation stage, again, we compare DNA's incremental control plane simulation using DDLog against Batfish. Um, this takes on order of about 10 milliseconds with DNA, which is about two orders of magnitude faster than Batfish. In the second stage, our differential data plane modeling, we compare against a unmodified version of APKeep that doesn't include the rule batching optimization we introduce in DNA. Uh, and this allows us to get about an order of magnitude speed up such that differential data plane modeling takes on the order of hundreds of milliseconds for the university backbone network. And lastly, for our differential property checking, well, we compare against approaches where we consider all equivalence classes or a subset equivalence classes, but all entry points into the network. And we see that DNA's efficient traversal of the forwarding graphs gives us two orders of magnitude speed up approximately um, and gets our differential property checking down to the order of milliseconds. 
Finally, we use synthetic fat tree configurations to evaluate DNA's generality and scalability. Uh, particularly, we look at a variety of changes to these configurations, ranging from taking interfaces up and down um, to enabling aggregation or adding static reps. And we can see that across all these different types of changes, uh, we see uh, with a 180 node fat tree network that DNA has reasonable performance. Uh, we're talking in the 100 uh, or hundreds of milliseconds range for all of these different types of changes. Uh, so we know that DNA can efficiently analyze a variety of changes. We also look at fat trees of different sizes from 180 all the way up to 500 different routers. And again, we see that DNA's performance uh, scales reasonably well as the size of the network increases. So in conclusion, uh, I hope I've convinced you that change is the only constant in networks and it's inefficient to evaluate changes using existing control plane verifiers. And so we've introduced differential network analysis that makes differences first-class citizens uh, and is able to analyze changes and identify differences in end-to-end -end properties three orders of magnitude faster than using existing verifiers. One of the limitations of our current work is that we can only consider one type of change in an incremental manner at a time. And so looking at combining, for example, differences in configuration and differences in link availability in a single analysis remains an important piece of future work. So with that, I thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions.